Earlier today, a Ukrainian delegation met with a Russian delegation on the Ukraine uh, border for the first time, uh, for first talks rather, between the two nations since Russia, be in the, uh, Russia began their invasion. V invasion. With me now uh, to give an update on the escalating situation is CBN senior international correspondent George Thomas, who is reporting live from Ukraine. George, welcome back to Washington Watch. Thanks for having me, Tony. So what happened uh, in this uh, discussion in Belarus uh, between the two parties? Any resolution? Uh, no. Uh, I mean, they met for about six hours. There were no preconditions. Uh, and, and as you mentioned, this is the first time that the two sides have met uh, since uh, Russia invaded about four days ago, going on to five days ago. Uh, from the Ukrainian side, it was a complete withdrawal and a ceasefire. From the Russian side, it was the demilitarized of Ukraine, that uh, A, all Ukrainians need to uh, lay down their weapons, and number two, that uh, the weapons that are scheduled to uh, pour into uh, Ukraine uh, from, uh, from NATO uh, and other European countries and the United States need to, in essence, uh, seize as well. Uh, there is some talk that uh, they will do a second round uh, in coming days, but uh, Zelensky, ahead of uh, today's meeting, uh, set a very, very low bar uh, pretty much uh, dampened any uh, kind of major breakthrough or expectations. George, given the actions of uh, Vladimir Putin to this point, could this be just another stalling tactic? Uh, potentially. I, I mean, look, I, I think the reality is that they, they did not anticipate uh, the, the the level of resistance from the Ukrainians. Uh, uh, they have, uh, to date, not captured any major territory, major city uh, in the entire country. Uh, and uh, But also concerning uh, is the fact that, uh, Tony, only a quarter of Russia's uh, forces that have massed along the border uh, have been deployed. And there is serious concern uh, that, uh, that that could uh, at any time be unleashed. Obviously, there is frustration uh, on the part of Kremlin because they had thought that they could just uh, roll their tanks across the Crimean bridge in the south, uh, roll across the Belarusian uh, uh, border to the north, uh, and then uh, come across uh, to the eastern side and within uh, a few hours, maybe a day or two, uh, seize the capital, Kiev. Uh, and that has not happened. But let's be very, very clear. Nothing in the in Putin paradigm has shifted in terms of his military objectives, and the military objectives uh, still stand. They are one to, in essence, decapitate Zelensky from power, replace him uh, with, uh, with a puppet regime, uh, and in essence take at least, at the moment, uh, half the country. Uh, and uh, that, that mission is still uh, uh, moving forward. Uh, George, now you mentioned one of the demands is that the Ukrainians disarm. They lay down their weapons. You have not only the Ukrainian military, you have the, the guard that's been called up, but you have civilians uh, that have been called into this battle, uh, and, and they are armed. Uh, I mean, this, this shows what an armed citizenry can do. It can actually defend a country. Uh, absolutely. And I think what it also shows, uh, uh, Tony, is that uh, Ukrainians are willing to sacrifice every drop of their blood to protect their nation. Uh, and that's uh, in contrast to the to the Russian army. Uh, what are they fighting for? In fact, you've seen the videos that have gone viral uh, on, on, on Twitter and Facebook and other social media platforms, uh, you know, for uh, it, basically cities, uh, uh, streets that uh, the local uh, population comes out and bravely stands in front of uh, columns of tanks and, and, and stops uh, the Russians, Russians the, the troops forward uh, movement. Uh, so when you have a people, a civilian population, Population that is absolutely determined to uh, protect their land, to protect the integrity and sovereignty 
of their land, absolutely they will fight. Uh, and uh, everybody is taking up arms. Here in Lviv, uh, there were probably about 150, 200 civilians who, um, who, who lined up this morning uh, to get weapons. Uh, Zelensky has reportedly sent out a tweet, in essence, uh, encouraging uh, foreign fighters and other Ukrainians who live overseas in the diaspora uh, to come back home and to fight. And so uh, this is what Zelensky has been telecasting to the entire world since all of this happened. He said, this is, we're fighting. I am, uh, my country is like a shield against uh, uh, the, the, the world's, one of the world's largest armies. And that's the role that we have played over the last eight years. So the Ukrainians are absolutely determined uh, to, to protect their land and uh, to protect their, their territory. And, and George, I think they are exceeding all expectations in, uh, in doing that. And I think they are encouraging uh, people around the country to pray harder and uh, to stand with him. And I appreciate you uh, staying up uh, late there in Ukraine to, uh, to join us this evening. Thank you so much. Always great and a pleasure to be on your broadcast. All right. Thank you, George. George Chalmers.